What is ideology? An ideology is a set of ideas, beliefs and attitudes, consciously or unconsciously held, which reflects or shapes understandings or misconceptions of the social and political world. Formally applied primarily to economic, political, or religious theories and policies, in a tradition going back to Karl Marx and Friedrich Engels, more recent use of the term has been viewed as condemnatory. And it is important to note that ideology serves to recommend, justify, or endorse collective action aimed at preserving or changing political practices and institutions. The concept of ideology is split almost irreconcilably between two major senses. The first is pejorative, denoting particular, historically distorted political thought which reinforces certain relationships of domination and in respect of which ideology functions as a critical unmasking concept. The second is a non-pejorative assertion about the different families of cultural symbols and ideas human beings employ in perceiving, comprehending and evaluating social and political realities in general, often within a systemic framework. Those families perform significant mapping and integrating functions. A major division exists within this latter category. Some analysts claim that the study of ideology can be non-evaluative in establishing scientific facts about the way political beliefs reflect the social world and propel people to specific action within it. Others hold that ideology injects specific politically value-laden meanings into conceptualizations of the social world which are inevitably indeterminate and is consequently a means of constructing rather than reflecting that world. This also applies to interpretations undertaken by the analysts of ideology themselves. The term ideology first made its appearance in French as ideology at the time of the French Revolution, when it was introduced by a philosopher, A. L. C. D. Stutt de Tracy, as a short name for what he called his science of ideas, which he claimed to have adapted from the epistemology of the philosophers John Locke and Étienne Benoît de Condillac for whom all human knowledge was knowledge of ideas. The fact is, however, that he owed rather more to the English philosopher Francis Bacon, whom he revered no less than did the earlier French philosophers of the Enlightenment. It was Bacon who had proclaimed that the destiny of science was not only to enlarge human knowledge, but also to improve the life of men on earth, and it was this same union of the programmatic with the intellectual that distinguished de Stutt de Trace's ideology from those theories, systems, or philosophies that were essentially explanatory. The science of ideas was a science with a mission. It aimed at serving people, even saving them, by ridding their minds of prejudice and preparing them for the sovereignty of reason. Thus, ideology has been from its inception a word with a marked emotive content, though de Stutt de Tracy presumably had intended it to be a dry, technical term. Such was his own passionate attachment to the science of ideas, and such was the high moral worth and purpose he assigned to it, that the word ideology was bound to possess for him a strongly laudatory character. And equally, when Napoleon linked the name of ideology with what he had come to regard as the most detestable elements in revolutionary thought, he invested the same word with all of his feelings of disapprobation and mistrust. Ideology was, from this time on, to play this double role of a term both laudatory and abusive not only in French, but also in German, English, Italian, and all the other languages of the world into which it was either translated or transliterated.